the award for worst son ever goes to Joel Michael Guy Jr. On Saturday, November 26, 2016, the 28 year old did away with both his parents. This is the weekend after Thanksgiving. And why did he do it? Because he was a narcissistic, spoiled brat. Earlier that month, either in late October or very early November, his parents let him know that they were going to be retiring and they weren't going to be able to support him anymore. And he didn't like that idea. Your uh, mother provided you with all financing for your living expenses. Yes. And he remembered that his mother had a $500,000 life insurance policy. And the only way he could get that money would be if both parents were either proven to be gone or if they were missing. And this life insurance policy was pretty much the only way he was going to get anything out of anything happening to them since he was the beneficiary of that if his dad was gone as well. This was his mother's policy. And his dad had three daughters older than him from a previous marriage. So, for Thanksgiving, Joel went home. The whole family was there. And his siblings were a bit put off because Joel was being so happy and smiling a lot, which they thought wasn't like him at all. And it turns out that he was real happy because he was planning a way to get what he wanted. Guy in hardware stores near his Baton Rouge apartment. He's seen in the video buying items the state says he planned to use in those killings. The purchases, a secret from his family. He stayed on with his parents. Everyone else went home. And... On Saturday, which was November 26, 2016, his plan came together. Well, his mom went to go get groceries at the local Walmart. Joel Jr. went upstairs, encountered his dad in the exercise room, and used his knife. It was horrendous. The scene showed that there was a struggle. The blinds were torn. Um, the Bowflex was knocked over. Once his dad was gone, Joel Jr. cut the clothes off of his father and then proceeded to dismember his dad. And he had cut his hands during that struggle his mom came home and she set her purchases the groceries on the floor by the front door and she headed upstairs and Joel did the same thing to her and I believe that it was somewhere around 40 stabs to the dad and around 30 to the mom he had decided that he was going to get rid of them completely so he did some really gross things and was using corrosive liquids to try to get rid of everything he turned the heat on in the house he had stuff boiling on the stove and he had other stuff in plastic tubs melting i guess and then on sunday he drove home where he lived in baton rouge and he went to have his wounds treated at the student clinic at the university that he was attending i had some rather severe cuts on my hands um, i had a cut on my right palm right here where there's a scar and i was like uh very severe cut on the left palm where there's a scar i was worried about losing my left palm and so i needed that 
And I think he was studying to become a plastic surgeon. I don't know. And then on Monday, Joel's mom's boss was suspicious because she didn't come into work and she wasn't reachable by phone and she also had tried Mr. Guy's phone and wasn't able to get a hold. So she called the police for them to do a welfare check. The officers went to the house. The house is at 11434 Golden View Lane. The house was for sale, but there was no real estate lock on the front door. They figured out later that the back door doorknob had been removed and put onto the front door. And they were able to see into the house and see the groceries that were on the floor, including, you know, melted ice cream. They could sense heat coming out of the hole in the back door where the, where the uh, knob used to be. And they could smell a strange smell. And so they opened the garage with a garage door opener and they were able to access the house. And first they noticed that on a table, Mr. and Mrs. Guy's wallets were on the table and there was a sledgehammer there along with some rifles and there was a pot boiling on the stove and you know they could hear a dog barking somewhere and then they found all that terrible stuff that let them know what had happened to Mr. and Mrs. Guy. They also found sewer line cleaner, baking soda, liquid fire, muriatic acid, uh, drain opener and lye, and food grade hydrogen peroxide and bleach and a bleach sprayer. They also found a backpack that had in Guy Jr.'s room at the house that had a notebook that totally detailed and planned out this whole horrible, horrible thing that he did. And, you know, he just went about it in a totally, like, logical and methodical manner, um, deciding what to do to get rid of DNA, etc. So the whole thing was there in writing, in his writing. And they arrested him on the 29th, Tuesday. Joel Guy Jr. pled not guilty, but he was found guilty. And the trial took about four days and he was found guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison. He didn't show any remorse. He even seemed like he was a little bit proud of what he did. I mean, this, this kid is just pure evil. And to top it all off, he also wrote a letter asking them to put him in a cell on his own because he had an urge to uh, blind his cellmate while the guy's sleeping with his bare hands saying that, you know, he doesn't want to get in trouble for doing that. He doesn't, he doesn't want to get any write-ups there in prison. He doesn't want to lose any privileges. So he really thinks he should be on his own. And then later on in the letter, he said something about that. Oh, and he didn't think the guy deserved to be blinded either. But once again, you know, Joel Guy Jr.'s number one thought is for himself and getting what he wants. So... He's a manipulator, and I know a lot of people throw around the word narcissist, and I think it does apply here. Thank you for watching. Please share your comments below.